The Japanese government has drawn up a road map for reconstructing areas in 12 municipalities near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The areas were previously designated as evacuation zones. In areas of these municipalities where the evacuation order has been lifted, the government will finish decontaminating and restoring essential utilities within the next two years. The government also plans to create jobs through the decontamination and decommission of the reactors in these municipalities during this period. The roadmap says the government will take social responsibility for for having promoted nuclear energy as a state policy. The plan also says it will ensure the execution of the measures until the very end. The roadmap pledges that the government will restore Restore transportation systems and rebuild industries within the next five years so evacuees can lead stable lives after they return home. The plan says the government aims to launch new industries including those related to renewable energies and medical equipment within 10 years as a way to secure jobs and attract younger generations to settle in the areas. The Japanese government will conduct thyroid tests on children outside Fukushima Prefecture. The aim is to see whether last year's nuclear accident in the prefecture has anything to do with the discovery of lumps in the thyroid glands of one in three children in Fukushima Prefecture. The decision has been made by the Cabinet Office's team supporting people affected by the nuclear disaster. Radioactive iodine released from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant can accumulate in the thyroid glands of children and raise their risk of developing cancer. Fukushima Prefecture is conducting thyroid tests on all children 18 years old or younger. By the end of March, 38,000 children had been checked. No one was diagnosed with cancer, but lumps were found in 36% of the children. The prefecture explained that lumps can be found in healthy children, so no special measures are needed, but parents voiced strong concerns over the finding. Thyroid checks will now be conducted on 4,500 children aged 18 years old or younger in three areas outside Fukushima Prefecture by the end of March. The data will then be compared with that of Fukushima. The Cabinet Office says data will be collected in areas not affected by radioactive materials released from the crippled nuclear reactors. It says the move is designed not only to alleviate concerns, but also to detect possible effects of the nuclear accident on children's health, if any, as early as possible. A large, very strong typhoon has passed by the main island of Okinawa in southern Japan. Typhoon Bolaven is one of the most powerful typhoons to hit Okinawa in more than 60 years. Bolaven has an atmospheric pressure of 930 hectopascals at its center. The maximum wind speed is 180 kilometers per hour. The Japan Meteorological Agency warns of severe wind, torrential rain, storm surges, and rough seas in Okinawa and Amami Island. By Tuesday morning, Okinawa is expected to have a record total rainfall of about 250 millimeters. Drivers in different parts of the world are hurting from more pain at the pump. 
The accident last year at Fukushima Daiichi changed the way many people thought about oil and gas. Daniel Jurgen is among the world's most sought-after thinkers on energy policy. He wrote the Pulitzer-winning book, The Prize, The Epic Quest for Oil, Money and Power. He spoke with NHK World's Kaori Ida about oil, gas and the place of nuclear energy. It's an honor to meet you in person. You. It's a pleasure and to have you. Thank you for thank coming Thank you so today. much for letting us thank inside you. your house. Thank you. Look forward to our discussion today. Thank you. The 20th century was a century of oil. What will be the 21st century about? Well, if the 20th century was a century of oil, I think the 21st century will be the century of energy. Mm. It will be more diversified. Uh, there will be more different sources in it. Uh, natural gas will play a bigger role. Renewables will play a bigger role. Jurgen says the Fukushima nuclear accident has changed not only Japan's energy policy, but also the global trend toward nuclear power generation. The Fukushima accident uh, dramatically changed the global energy landscape. Up until March 10th, 2011, we would have been talking about a nuclear renaissance around the world. The nuclear renaissance ended on March 11th. But I think what we've seen as a result is that what was called a nuclear renaissance has become a nuclear patchwork. I knew right away that, uh, it was, uh, that it was, we now entered a different era in terms of nuclear power. The Japanese public said that they wanted to see Japan without nuclear energy. But given that prior to 311, we relied on nuclear energy 30 percent. Yeah. I mean, you know, Japan needs to think about and make its informed choices about nuclear, both looking at the industry itself and how it's managed and what the regulatory system is, and also how it fits into Japan's competitiveness in the world economy. Do Japanese manufacturers stay in Japan? Or do they leave the country because less reliability in terms of electricity supply? So that's why you need a kind of a, a big picture. How optimistic are you about nuclear? I mean, about renewable energies? Realistic that these energy issues are complex. The energy mix does not change quickly. It takes a long time. It involves a lot of costs. It's fundamental to our societies and our ways of life and our ability to earn a living. Uh, so, but I think that you're not going to get quick changes, but I can see the changes coming. The other area of um, breakthrough uh, would be in storage of renewable energy or of electricity in general, how to store electricity on, on a large scale, because then you could produce it when the sun is shining, the wind's blowing, and you have it when, when it's not. But this is a major challenge, and I think researchers all over the world are focused on that question. What is the significance of the discovery of this abundance of shale gas? The, the discovery of shale gas, in United, or the development of shale gas in the United States is a really big thing. Uh, in fact, I think based upon its impact and its scale, it's the biggest energy innovation of this new century. This is a huge change. It's turned out that with it, comes some very important economic developments, particularly job creation. We did a study that said there are about 600,000 new jobs created by shale gas. Because energy costs are important to the competitive position, one of the things we can see here in the United States is because of these very low prices now, we have a natural gas and natural gas generated electricity. This gives an uh, important competitive advantage to uh, U.S. industry and the global economy. So uh, you have to look at it, what you do with your power mix, your energy mix. You have to look at the whole picture. The World Meteorological Organization says the 10-year period between 2001 and 2010 was the warmest on record. The most notable effect of this, says Japan's space agency, is the Arctic Ocean's ice cover shrinking to a record low. Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency measured the ice with its own water observation satellite, Shizuku, which was launched into orbit in May. They say their measurements show the ice covered 4.21 million square kilometers as of Friday. The previous record, marked in September 2007, was 4.25 million square kilometers. JAXA says the Arctic ice is expected to shrink even more this year. It typically contracts every year in mid to late September. 
The agency attributes the contraction to rising ocean temperatures that have likely thinned the ice shelf. U.S. satellites and other devices have recorded the extent of Arctic sea ice coverage since 1978. 